good afternoon. Uh, the whole idea begins 100 years ago with Modern Art Week in Brazil. It is a key event to the Brazilian art scene and has a nice until today, as you will see. Uh, the context of this Modern Art Week is the beginning of the international dialogue. Sorry. Okay. Uh, of the arts in Brazil. Uh, we're starting to dialogue with expressionism, cubism, and dadaism, and etc. Uh, there is, until this moment, there is an almost completely uh, absence of dialogue with Brazilian art production and international art production. Uh, and the idea of this towards a postmodern art week is 100 years ago, uh, I'm provoking the dialogue, as you've seen, yesterday of the Brazilian scene and the international scene in LARPs. In 1928, we have one of the most famous uh, repercussions until today, that is anthropophagy. This picture is called uh, Abaporu, man-eater, and and it was a present to Oswald de Andrade, a poet and journalist, and the list is long. Uh, the provocation with the, the, the gift to Oswald de Andrade was, Andrade begins a movement around this picture. The movement is anthropophagy. The idea in anthropophagy is this, it's a um, metaphor, above all, about our urge, our Brazilian urge to devour uh, culture at all. And in the, the very act of devouring uh, culture, we devour ourselves. The, the idea is a critical digestion. I will, lose, uh, I will use a lot of metaphor today. Uh, uh, it's a Brazilian way, the metaphor thing. Um, in short, is a, an aesthetics of otherness. The idea of aesthetics of otherness is central in Brazilian art production. In 1950s, until 90s, uh, there are several movements that made a diffusion, a, a piling on Andrade's provocation. This one is Cinema Novo, the central idea in new cinema, Cinema Novo, was a camera at hand and an idea in mind to make movies with less resources, very similar to Dogma 95. Uh, this one is called Rei da Vela, uh, Candle King or something, is uh, Oswald Andrade's play that was uh, restored, um, reconfigurated and stuff in the 60s by Zé Celso in Workshop Theater. I'm pretty sure no one, one of Zé Celso's students, he will appear soon here. Uh, this is in the 60s too, uh, it's called Tropicalia, it is an installation by Elio Tisica. Uh, Tisica at some point became famous not only by Tropicalia but from Parangolé também. Parangolé is a, a piece of art that you wear, very similar to Bispo de Andrade's coat that you've seen yesterday. So some people from music look into Zé Celso's play, look into Tropicalia's installation, 
And in the end of the 60s, beginnings of, beginning of the 70s, just off. Maybe we can apply it to music. That's called tropicalism. Caetano Veloso, Gilberto Gil, some names you may have heard of it. And so, this all uh, happened, piling on Andrade's work of anthropophagy, the historical recovery that I'm doing to you right now. This is one of Zé Celso's students, Augusto Boal. The, the whole idea of the theater of the oppressed is an... I'm kind of oversimplifying it, but it's a kind of anthropophagy application in theater. This is the central idea of the theater of the oppressed. By the way, it wasn't called at the beginning as theater of the oppressed. It was political poetics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the name Theater of the Oppressed was a publishing decision because of uh, Freire's uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Maybe we can surf this wave and call it Theater of the Oppressed. Go on. <laughs> uh, this is uh, one of my favorite offsprings of anthropophagy. This is called Chico Science and Nação Zumbi. They mix it, Maracatu is an African-Brazilian rhythm of drums. They mix it with punk rock and electronic music. <laughs> a little years later, uh, there is Sepultura that listened to Chico Science and Nação Zumbi and mixed it with metal, with tribal rhythms and stuff. So, the show must go on. Anthropophagy is still today uh, creating offsprings. But what about LARPs? <laughs> uh, in 2014, Luis Falcon wrote an article to Knut Punkt called From Dark Oak to Caipirinha with Nordic Eyes. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, our processes in LARP are anthropophagic at all. We begin in LARPs making uh, one word by night LARPs. In the 90s, one word by night was a thing in Brazil too. At some point, we kind of um, try to make our own identity, our caipirinha. One of the main ingredients of our caipirinha was the Nordic eyes. It's not at all that we're talking with you and stuff. Uh, and the discussion of this uh, Brazilian way, I'll call it in, in Portuguese very soon, the jeitinho brasileiro, was a thing that we call each other in Brazil. This is the Brazilian way. Jeitinho uh, Brasil is kind of jerry-rigging the word, something like that. It's a thing that's very close to anthropophagy at some point. It's how can we do something with our own resources, with our own references, but still making Access where until now there is none. That's the whole idea, I think. And in, I think it's 2018, 2018, uh, we begin to write our own manifesto. At some point, we're discussing that, like uh, Ozo de Andrade said in his. Anthropophagus Manifesto, only anthropophagy unites us. I think I remember yesterday what, what I just told about our splitted scene. But everything, everywhere we look, there is a piece of anthropophagy, no matter what we do. 
It's always uh, at some point uh, in dialogue with the, the idea of anthropophagy. <coughs> uh, what's the main uh, concept here? When uh, we try to bring this idea of the critical digestion of the otherness, the critical digestion of ourselves, of our biography when we play, when we bleed, bleed in, in LARPs. We're kind of doing this anthropoph anthropophagy, not only in Brazilian LARPs, in LARPs at all. Uh, I was talking with, I didn't remember the name. Where are you? Yesterday at dinner. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if Bo was uh, alive today, he would not talk about theater. He would talk about LARPs. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Uh, LARP is by default a medium of the oppressed. By default. The, I, I cannot uh, even think of a LARP that doesn't have this otherness, this anthropophagical interest at all and that's uh, the whole thing I, I remember when I was writing that at some point and I, I have messaged Sarah I miss the the, the keynotes at all I'm beginning to, to become more theoretical than uh, describing one do you remember that so that's the thing uh, anthropophagy of course is uh, a strong characteristic uh, stat in the the Brazilian scene, but it's not a Brazilian thing. I think it's more an anthropophagic thing. We're always looking to otherness in LARP. A LARP does not exist without this otherness, this aesthetic of otherness. The narrative that I produce depends on the narrative that other stimuli me that's the whole thing in LARPs I'm at every single moment in a digestion of the other of myself of my biography of all my re references and stuff and so that's the whole thing in LARPs and at some point I Turn to Villain Flusers. Villain Flusser. Uh, uh, um, it's hard to say it's a media scholar, but it, it is a media scholar. Uh, Villain Flusser was a Czech that lived in Brazil for 30 years or something like that. At, at some point during the 60s, he said that. Uh, Communication was split between discursive communication and dialogical communication. Mass media is a discursive communication. He, his main goal is to transmit something to someone. That's the, the central idea from media studies. But we have a dialogical communication. The central idea in dialogical communication is not to transmit anything is to create something, is to create an information. And in the 60s, Willem Flussert said that he think that at some point of history, games will be the ones that will be the main dialogical media. That's the whole thing. And so, bringing all of it together, making this anthropophagy. At some point, uh, we have a discussion of, again, Boal, Boal's metaxis. Metaxis is a concept from Rainbow of Desire method. The idea that I come to a second reality to fix something in this first reality that we live. I think it's transformative, transformative play. It's the same. We do it all the time in LARPs. 
bleed out with um, um, emancipatory uh, goal, maybe can be called metaxis. Maybe it's the same thing. That's the whole idea. Uh, and that's the, the idea to bring it to the to provoke to future dialogues, to provoke with future creations of information, not transmission. I'm not here to transmit anything. I'm here to provoke the new creations of information, to make a dialogical communication, anthropophagy process, you name it. Just to give an example of the use of that in the Brazilian scene, that is Luis Prado's 2020 Gospel or Evangelho 2020. Uh, it is a game that I read it in this LARP's fiction. A streamer carries out shows in the near future where he applies a truth serum in, to former supporters of the president so that, may, that they reveal the reasons that made him to support the Messiah. I don't know if you know that, but Jair Bolsonaro's middle name is Messiah. Yeah, it's a direct provocation. <laughs> uh, despite the atrocities perpetrated. What's the idea here? LARPs, as we said on Tuesday, LARPs are truly accessible, truly democratic, because we don't need anything at all to reproduce this, this idea whenever we want. So it's a tool to make instantaneous, immediate critiques from what's happening today. That's a powerful tool. I, I think that's, that's the point we are here discussing. Internal transformative relations, but also external, so societal uh, transformative, transformative relations. <laughs> so, the LARP community has been discussing LARP as a game, as a media, as an art form. Maybe we can discuss it also as a political poetics. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>